There is evidence supporting the idea that one of the key strategies to prevent a small bone fracture in the foot during running is to not only run with the forefoot strike landing, but to run in a shoe that offers a very good sense of the ground or good ground feel clarity. Shoes like minimal shoes or barefoot like running shoes with a very thin sole without any thick compressible foam, gel, or even plastic underfoot materials. And that's because there's an important distinction or difference in plantar, plantar meaning the underfoot surface. There's a big difference in plantar pressure volume and intensity between runners who run barefoot or in barefoot like running shoes versus runners who run in thickly cushioned running shoes. In other words, runners who wear thickly cushioned running shoes may generate abnormally or unusually high doses of plantar pressure stress on areas of the foot not structurally capable of enduring such high heavy pressure points which may over time boil into fracture or even shin splints believe it or not during running as we so well know injury prevention efforts in running mainly target factors such as reducing impact by adding more layers of cushioning under the foot but what's so scientifically interesting is that many studies which are linked down below in the description box have found the same basic conclusion that decreases in ground feel at the feet may lead to increases in abnormally high plantar pressures, especially on the midfoot. And also the softer and the thicker the underfoot cushioning correlates or may result in greater peak plantar pressures on the foot, thereby potentially putting more stress on the foot during running. Things get worse, a 2011 study in the journal Gait Posture and a 2004 study in the journal of the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons found that abnormally high plantar pressure at the midfoot was a major risk factor for medial tibial stress syndrome, also known as shin splints in the inner lower leg, in habitual shod or shoe long distance runners. Another compounding problem is that thick shoe cushioning masks the feel of high impacts during running, leaving runners very incapable of truly feeling abnormal rises in plantar pressure and impact stress on the foot. And evidence in alignment with this came from the pioneering work by Dr. Stephen Robbins, who found that runners who run in thickly cushioned running shoes might be exposed to more plantar impact or more impact assaults on the foot because shoe cushion thickness significantly diminishes transmission of mechanical transients, which are adequate stimuli to proprioceptors. In simple terms, when you can't feel the ground at all with your feet due to thick underfoot cushion materials, this failure to capture more of a full sensory scope of the ground at your feet may be accompanied by a greater downward force and a greater push force when running in these kinds of shoes, meaning that the foot may be very vulnerable to landing more forcefully with greater impact generation with the ground when ground feel is lost at the feet and may really go against the natural impact avoidance default reaction that you would get if you were to run barefoot or in thin sole running shoes. In fact, a 1996 study published in the, in the Journal of Clinical Biomechanics discovered that running over harder plantar surfaces with very minimal underfoot protection resulted in stark reductions in peak plantar pressure on account of the runners reflexively adjusted their landing strategy to land more lightly. In keeping with this finding, when you run in barefoot like shoes or even when you run barefoot, especially on harder surfaces, your initial reaction at the feet is to reflexively land with your foot in a better position that's closer to your center of mass with better forefoot strike precision, which taken together helps reduce the break force. But also you land with less push force and you get a faster withdrawal retraction or removal of the foot off the ground, of which the net effect is you are better able to naturally assemble a lighter, softer, more responsive landing strategy of the foot that may give you real protection against dangerous rises in plantar pressure. And overall, the underfoot ground feel feedback can really help you rein in your worst mechanical impulses in pounding the pavement with your feet when you can feel the ground more fully with your feet. So adding those essential plantar or underfoot sensory feedbacks via barefooting or wearing thinner running shoes can help you get a good handle on your forefoot strike running mechanics while keeping your feet engaging actively 
which is really going to help speed up the process of getting functionally stronger feet that can stand up to longer, faster, harder miles. But the biggest takeaway here is that based on this line of evidence, we can confidently say that thick underfoot cushioning may mess with the body's proprioceptive circuitry. Proprioception is defined as the constant feedback loop within your nervous system that informs your brain about what position you are in and what forces are acting upon your body at a given point in time. And the body's proprioceptive system also plays a very important role in maintaining the body's natural mechanical defenses against high impacts while running barefoot. And this is because the underfoot is incredibly densely populated with groups of nerves that that belong to the proprioceptive system. And as part of this system, all the sensory elements that converge at the feet when barefoot is sent to the brain. And when the feet can feel the ground more fully, the tactile and pressure sensations from the ground stimulate directly the proprioceptive system to activate a range of other nerves that switches on a range of muscles and reflexive responses that are key organizers of more functional movement patterns and other biomechanical outputs that help produce impact avoidance behaviors so you don't end up with high impacts crashing into the foot or the leg. This is why increased barefoot activity training fits so nicely into the role of injury prevention but when the proprioceptive system is in a sense blocked at the feet with thick shoe cushioning, it may really compromise the proprioceptive feedback loop and the default reaction in this capacity seems to be harder forceful footballs. So instead of adding protection, such footwear seems to take the protection away by some estimates. So just remember that if cushioned running shoes can't reduce all the impact, then how can they prevent all the injuries? Obviously, there are so many variables involved and many more to be discovered that go into causing running related injuries, but certain running shoes, namely thickly cushioned running shoes, are certainly on record for producing more enormous and more immediate varieties of impacts on the feet as compared with running barefoot or in minimalist shoes. And that to help you learn to avoid pounding the pavement with your feet, when you learn how to run, doing some barefoot running training on a track or on a smooth road or even on a treadmill or switch to running in minimalist footwear can really assist you in developing a landing strategy that's so brief that certain impact variables are not fully produced on the foot. And knowing all this keeps momenting the fact that on the mechanical front and on the functional strength development front, you are always making progress when you're barefoot. This is why I always like to say that barefoot running makes better shod runners, which is why I always like to circle back to saying that the enormous success that we see in the top distance runners in the world from East Africa, like Eliud Kipchoge, Haley Gabriel Selassie, and Ternish Dababa, I could go on and on, these upper echelons of distance running have the same common denomination such that the essential features of their running style as shod runners are legitimately tied to running barefoot during very critical stages of mobility development. And that's really something that can't be overlooked and is proof that progress may be possible if you use barefoot running as active measures to help shape safer, more functional biomechanics that sustains well at faster paces and over longer distances. So I just wanted to end on that note. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already because you'll get more informed on the health and performance benefits of barefoot running and minimalist running as well as you will get more informed on the hot button debate heel strike running versus forefoot strike running. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.